160. He's gone. Okay, <clears throat> it is time to get all this stuff back in the boat. And so, because all of our hardware was rusted, these are the bolt. This is the old bolt that used to hold the flywheel in place. I'm sorry, hold the dampener plate in place. And it came with a lock washer on it. Because this is kind of a unique bolt that you're not going to find in a car, I had to go to the hardware store to get it. And so, when you go to the hardware store, it's very important you buy actual grade 8 preferably. You can do grade 5, but generally everything that is rotating requires grade 8. Bolts, um, like this one, that is the exact same length, match the thread pitch, and these guys came, they were installed with a uh, crush washer. And so we're going to install them with a crush washer. So there's our three bolts that are going to hold the uh, dampener plate to the flywheel. And then for the flywheel, these bolts are actually were reusable probably. Um, the factory bolts are hardened also to grade eight. These are the, the flywheel bolts. And you wanna make sure that when you go to the hardware store, you get flywheel bolts and not flex plate bolts because uh, they're gonna be different lengths obviously. And so this is just a universal kit. You wanna make sure it's 7 16 by 20 and they're uh, 0.9 inches in length. Now, these aftermarket kits come with these stupid crush washers. Nobody ever uses them. That's a horrible idea. The stuff you're looking for is called Loctite, and you need to make sure you install it on your flywheel bolts. So the first thing we got to do is get to get the engine jacked up a little bit again, and then we can go and install our flywheel. So just a little bit of blue Loctite on each of the bolts as they go in. And remember, on the boat, the starter teeth face outwards. I think that might actually be different than the way it goes on a, on a car, but I double checked the video. This is how we took it off. So this is how we're putting it back on. Our new bolt heads are 11 sixteenths and flywheel bolts are torqued to 60 pound feet. Crisscross pattern, obviously. So there's our dampener plate installed. Now we put a little Loctite on all of our grade eight bolts. Generally, I frown upon using these, um, lock nuts on something like this but since the original application used it uh, it may be needed as a spacer for the head bolt for the bolt head and so we're going to stick with it and these bolts are 9 16 and we're going to go ahead and torque them to the same 60 foot pounds so our bell housing went in without any concerns long bolt medium length bolt remember there's a short bolt back in here and it's got four ground leads on it if you don't attach your four ground leads you're going to have a bad time and then there's another long bolt right there and that's all that holds the bell housing in place um now i guess we can put back our uh actually i think we're going to keep this out of the way let's we'll just keep this out of the way until we get our transmission in there but this guy just bolts in uh just bolts in these two bolt holes right here and you can see, I redid this probably like a month ago. And we've only been on the water one time. You can already see little scales of rust. So for those of you that are on the fence, paint the shit out of everything. Because it is basically the only thing that can really keep the, uh, the rust at bay. So there we go. Transmission in place. Three out of four mounting bolts. And now we have to lower it down and get our uh, trans mounts in place. Alright, once you get our four transmission mount bolts in, the hardest part is out of the way. Uh, at this point, we're going to thread these nuts on and basically use that to pull the transmission centered and tight. Now the next step to reinstallation is to get these uh, pinch bolts tight. And remember, these things are wedges, so they're going to free spin for a little bit. And it's going to feel like you stripped out a thread or something. It's going to be like, wow, there's no resistance, what the fuck's going on? Um, don't worry about it. You will eventually get them to the point where they're showing almost like three quarters of an inch of thread. And then all of a sudden they will pull tight. And it is that pull tight that you're looking for. As you can see, our drive shaft has lined up almost perfectly. And as you remember, on our drive shaft, we have this guy. And we have this guy. And those two guys that we made our little alignment marks. So now we're going to put the bolts in, tighten this up, uh, do some final installation, and then do some measurements real quick. So before we go and put kind of all the little stuff back together, 
I wanted to make sure that we check all of our angles. So according to this, the case angle was 19 degrees. That looks pretty much like 19 degrees. Magnetic shaft angle here was uh, 11 degrees. That looks like it's probably 11 degrees. And our engine angle was what? 11 degrees. And that's hovering right around 11 degrees. So. I think we can successfully say that we have put the engine in alignment, or I'm sorry, put the transmission in alignment back where it needs to be. Uh, at this point, it's just a bunch of busy work. We got to get the um, the oil cooler plumbed and installed. We got to get uh, all of our, all of our electronics back in place. Put the starter back in place. Um, obviously fill the transmission case up with fluid. I think I might actually do that next while all this stuff is out of the way. Um, and basically anything else that's kind of left here in the truck, I'm sorry, in the, uh, in the boat that isn't installed to something but should be, we're just going to put back. And uh, you guys saw me take all this apart, so we're just going to cut back when it's all back together. Well, boys and girls, our transmission is rebuilt. It is back in the engine. Uh, back on the engine does not seem to be leaking any fluid uh, fluid level seems to be solid it starts every time it runs it goes in forward and in reverse um, there's probably going to be some break in um, on the lakes we're going to go easy first time we're out there but other than that i am very very pleased uh, as far as i know everything's going to be perfect we're going to get lots of fun hours out of this boat uh, without any further problems course those are famous last words but I'm pretty happy with the way everything went so now I got to clean up this boat a little bit because there's nastiness everywhere but um, a few final thoughts number one go talk to the folks at skidim.com s-k-i-d-i-m.com they are as far as I can tell the only source of getting these parts uh, they're very knowledgeable very helpful people and so Go talk to those folks. It'll be worth your time. Get your parts. Now, I replaced the dampener plate uh, as well. So dampener plate, clutch uh, pack, and oil seal pack brought my total to about $650, including shipping. Um, the only way now, uh, if you want to rebuild, is going to cost you like $1,200, $1,300. If you want, and I don't know who even does that anymore. For $1,700 or $1,800, you can get the... ADI, which is a bolt-in upgrade next generation transmission from PCM. Um, that's your other option. Put things into perspective. It took me, uh, I started at 10.30 till about 2 o'clock the first day, so call it three hours uh, to get the transmission broken down. Uh, I worked till, took a little break, worked till about 7 o'clock at night, so call it uh, four hours to rebuild it. And today I got started at 10.30, it's now 2 o'clock, so another 3 hours to get everything back in buttoned up, and probably about 3 hours to get it yanked out. So realistically, you're looking at 8, 12, looking at like 14 hours uh, to do this job and do it right. So it's not a, uh, it's not a trivial, easy thing to do, but hopefully this all works out and is totally worth it. So now I'm going to get the uh, shop back, I'm going to clean this thing up and uh, make sure that she's ready for the lake next week. Thank you for watching. I know it's been a long video. I hope this video helps some of you. Uh, if you're interested, check out my Instagram at MaxWorks, Facebook backslash MaxWorks. You can see pictures of all this uh, as it's happening. Peace.